this is a clinical case video. When you see this symbol flash, hit pause and have a think about the question before moving on. This way, you'll get much more from the video. You're working in the emergency department. A 26-year-old African female is brought in by ambulance to one of the recess bays. She's in severe respiratory distress with oxygen saturations of 85%. What should your initial management be for this unwell patient? With the help of other team members, you should resuscitate the patient in regard to their A, B, C, D, E. So, airway, secure for now. Breathing, patients in respiratory distress, a respiratory rate of 35, saturations of 85%, and the chest has crackles all over the right side. You apply 15 litres of oxygen via a non-rebreather mask. Circulation. The blood pressure is 130 over 90, the pulse is 128 and regular, and the heart sounds are normal. IV access is gained and a blood count, basic biochemistry and CRP are sent alongside blood cultures. A blood group and screen is also sent. Disability. Patient is conscious and responding to commands but is drowsy. Exposure. The patient's temperature is 38.5. You reassess the patient. On high flow oxygen, her saturations have improved to 94% and her respirations are now 26. She's unwell but stable for now. The patient's drowsy and not really able to give you a full history, but she's complaining of pain on the right side of her chest. The hospital notes will be available shortly. What conditions are you concerned about at this time? What investigations are you going to request? and what empirical therapy might you start? Although there could be a number of causes for this acute respiratory distress, the presence of crackles on the right side of the chest suggests a community-acquired pneumonia. You request a portable chest x-ray and perform an arterial blood gas. Because this is severe infection, you send off urinary legionella and pneumococcal antigens and arrange for a nasal swab for respiratory viruses. You initiate IV antibiotics. You give her a 500 ml bolus of normal saline and also administer intravenous paracetamol for analgesia. You get a call from the lab. They've been looking at the blood you sent. Describe what you see. You can see that sickle cells are present. Also, the red cells don't look very dense. They're quite spread out, which suggests anemia. The lab informs you that the haemoglobin is 70, white cell count is 26 with a raised neutrophil count, and the CRP is 320. The other results are normal. What conditions are you now concerned about, and how will this affect your management? The patient is likely to have an underlying sickle cell disease, and with this presentation, you should be worried about an acute chest syndrome. Although your initial management with oxygen and antibiotics is absolutely appropriate, there are some additional considerations to the management. The prognosis of ACS is also much worse and it is likely that this patient will have to be managed in a high dependency setting. The chest x-ray now comes back. What can you see? Consolidation is seen. You call the haematologist on call. She knows the patient well. They're very happy with your initial management, but ask that the patient is transferred to the high dependency unit. They've also asked for a vas cath, or large bore central venous line, to be sighted. Why might the haematologist have asked for a large bore central venous access line? Transfusion is often required as part of the management of acute chest syndrome and this may take the form of either a simple top-up transfusion via a peripheral venous cannula or an exchange transfusion using a plasmapheresis machine and central venous access. The idea is to reduce the proportion of sickling blood cells by either topping up the number of red cells in the case of simple transfusion or by removing a volume of the patient's blood while simultaneously replacing it with transfused blood, which is an exchange transfusion. 
So, in this case, we've seen a young person with sickle cell disease. In addition to problems with anemia, sickle cell patients experience painful crises where the red cells, which turn to their sickle cell shape in hypoxic environments, have blocked small blood vessels and caused localized ischemia. Often this will present as a painful bony crisis. If the sickling occurs in the cerebral blood supply, it can lead to a stroke. If it occurs in the chest, it can lead to an acute chest syndrome, as demonstrated here. There are a number of causes for acute chest syndrome, but infection is the most common. The treatment is of the underlying condition, in this case pneumonia, and also to reduce the number of sickling cells, either by simple transfusion or exchange transfusion. Even in young patients, it is still a dangerous condition with an overall mortality of around 3%. I hope you've enjoyed this clinical case video. You can find more of them on our channel page.